Chapter 1, Section 5, Calculus AB, working with infinite limits. And um, we're going to determine infinite limits from the left and from the right. And then we will find and sketch vertical limits of the graph of the function. Are these functions continuous? Well, you should be able to answer that just by doing a quick analysis. I would go ahead and talk about maybe what is in the domain of each of these functions. And the domain, you know, often I'm concerned about the denominator going to zero. So if I just looked at this, when would the denominator go, into, go to zero? I think a lot of us could answer that real quickly and say when x is negative 9. That will be a restriction on our domain then. Um, it would be the set of all reals where x is not equal to negative 9. So that's my domain. And that brings up um, kind of my awareness that there could be a discontinuity at negative 9. What I'm going to do is um, look at this function. And what I see when I factor it is the top factors nicely by difference of squares. And I get this x plus 9 on the bottom. And then I notice that, well, I can cancel that away, and I'm left with x minus 9. And um, that's good, but I still have the same issue about the domain. And in fact, I can't use negative 9. If I looked at f of negative 9 as part of my requirement for continuity that um, the function has to exist at you know, all places, well, at f of negative 9, it does not exist. So this is undefined there. And that would prompt me to say that, you know, this function f of x is not continuous. It's not continuous everywhere because f of negative 9 is undefined. It's not everywhere continuous. B is actually even a little bit easier to see, isn't it? I know that I do not want this equaling 0. So if I just ask myself, where is it equal to 0? I would say, well, it's equal to 0 when x goes to negative, or is equal to negative 3. That means I have a domain where it's all x's again, just not at negative 3. And one of the requirements, if we remember about continuity, is, well, the limit has to exist as I approach you know, values. And if I looked at the limit as we approach negative 3, also I need to look at the point of x being negative 3. So when I put in negative 3, can I get out anything? Well, no, I cannot. It's undefined. So right there, one of the, th the requirements for continuity is broken. And I know that this function, g of x, is not continuous at x equals negative 3. So it's definitely not continuous everywhere. Letter C. I would probably try to do a little bit of factoring again, just so I can get a clearer look at what's going on with this function. And it looks like this thing will factor into x minus 3 and an x minus 4 all over x plus 3. Well, this denominator is going to indicate to me that the domain is all x is just not where x is equal to negative 3. So that kind of raises you know, an awareness of, wait a minute, negative 3 may be a problem. And indeed, you know, it, nothing is canceling out with it. There is um, not a, a, a way that I can plug in negative 3 to this function and get a, a y value out of it. So it's undefined at f of negative 3. And therefore, this function, h of g, or I'm sorry, h of x, is undefined. Finally, the last one we look, it's a nice piecewise function. Um, handing off kind of at x equals 2, because that's where we notice um, the subdivision going on for the function. It is a linear function, 3x when x is less than 2. It's also a linear function when x is bigger than or equal to 2. I guess my main concern is what is happening to the limit as I approach 
two. So I'm going to look at it both from the left and the right because it is a piecewise function and I notice there's different functions that are different rules attached when I'm on the left. When I'm to the left of two, I would put it into 3x and the limit of that looks like it'll be 6. When I'm to the right, I'm going to put it into 4x minus 1. I'm putting 2 in and I would have 8 minus 1 is equal to 7. Now, conclusion, when I look at my limit overall, when it approaches 2, I notice that the limit of this piecewise function f of x at 2 is not equal, 6 does not equal 7, therefore the limit at 2 does not exist because it's not meeting up at the same y value. If the limit does not exist, the function cannot be, it looks like our function is j of x, is not continuous at x equals 2. Very good. Um, I just want to point out a few of these. There is our graph of letter A and we said it was discontinuous at negative 9 and that is because negative 9 is not defined. B, we had a vertical asymptote it looks like at x equals negative 3 and remember x of negative 3 was um, a domain issue for us. C, there is our function I believe if we analyze this 1, 2, 3, negative 3 sits there, we will find a vertical asymptote out there at negative 3. And notice the error that comes in when that is in our table. Domain issue. And here is D, that um, piecewise function, and we calculated that one of them left off at, was it 6, and then picked up again at 7 and you'll notice that gap in there. So, very good. Let's look at the definition of infinite limits. Um, or it's a definition really of vertical asymptotes. A limit in which f of x increases or decreases without bound as x approaches c is called an infinite limit. The statement, the limit as x goes to c of f of x equals plus or minus infinity does not mean that the limit exists. It really tells, tells us that the limit fails to exist and the reason why is that there is this unbounded behavior of the function. It perhaps is going off to positive infinity or perhaps it's going off to negative infinity. Um, so we get this unbounded, which let's look at these examples down here. My limit as I approach 1 of this function, which is f of x, would be equal to, well from the left it's going to positive and from the right side it's going to positive. This would be headed to positive infinity. The middle one, as I approach, it looks like this is 1 again, as I approach 1 of my function f of x, well from the left side of 1 I'm headed to negative infinity and from the right side I am also headed to negative infinity. They agree about negative infinity. I have unbounded behavior heading to negative infinity. Finally, the last one, I am going to split this up because I notice that one's going to positive infinity and one's going to negative infinity. As I come into one from the left side of my function f of x, I see that this thing is headed up to positive infinity and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, as I come into 1 from the right side, it is headed to negative infinity. So that one I cannot make any conclusions specifically about the limit as x heads to 1 of f of x, whether it be positive or negative infinity because we're doing opposite things coming in from each side. We know that this 
the limit though does not exist. More on infinite limits. Let f be the function given by 3 divided by x minus 2. And you see the graph here. And wondering, OK, as I come in from the left side, this function is going to negative infinity. As I come in from the right side, the plus side of 2, this function is going to positive infinity. So this one's headed up, this one is headed down, giving us a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 because our scale is um, going by 2's it appears. So does a limit exist at 2? And why or why not? Well, no, a limit does not exist at 2 because from the left side and the right side, it does not agree. So this would be, you know, the left of 2 does not agree with the right side of 2. Taking some shortcuts there in writing. So if f of x approaches infinity, or possibly negative infinity, as x approaches some value c, from the right or from the left, then the line x equals c is called a vertical asymptote. And notice it says it approaches infinity or possibly negative infinity as it approaches from the right or the left. So it doesn't have to be from both sides. We can have, you know, kind of a one-sided um, behavior and still call it a vertical asymptote. This would be like our C. Here's our X of C, vertical line at C, and this thing would be um, having infinite behavior as we approach C. Vertical asymptotes, the definition was kind of just what we talked about. If f of x approaches infinity as x approaches c from the right or the left, then the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote. Functions that have vertical asymptotes are not continuous, and they um, have what is known as a non-removable discontinuity. Find the vertical asymptotes, if any, on the graphs of these functions. Well, what we should do, based on that definition, is we should analyze the limit, shouldn't we? The limit as x approaches um, from the left side or the right side, and check, it, check out what happens. So if I maybe came into this from the left side of 2 of my function f of x, what would be happening? Well, that would mean I'd have something a little bit smaller than 2, maybe 1.99, let's just imagine. And then I cube that value. So this is going to be a small negative number, isn't it? And then I'm going to cube it, which is going to make it even smaller. And then I take 4 and divide it by something very, very small. It appears to me we will have a negative answer, and it'll be going to negative infinity. If I choose my limit coming in from 2 from the right side of f of x, then I would have like 4 divided by 2.01 minus 2 raised to the third. And that would be, you know, once again, like 4 divided by 0 0.01 cubed. I would have 4 divided by something rather large positive, and that will um, I'm sorry, not a large positive. This will be a very small positive, and that's going to tend to take us to positive infinity. We will have a vertical asymptote by definition on this as x approaches 2. So our vertical asymptote would exist at x equals 2. Number 16, let's just take a in-depth look here by factoring first. Try to talk about our domains 
And I can see here that S should not be allowed to be 5 or negative 5. So our domain would be the set of all reals where X is not equal to 5 or negative 5. Those would be very strong possibilities for vertical asymptotes. And, you know, they, I can tell that it is non-removable style because I will not be able to cancel and make it removable. There is definitely a vertical asymptote. I'm not going to show you the limit approach to it. But if it's non-removable, um, most likely they're going to be vertical asymptotes. 24 is nice. I, I want you to try this one mainly because I want to see your factoring on the bottom of this. I, the, the top factor is nice, doesn't it? It's x minus 2 and an x plus 2. The bottom, when I see four terms, I often want to just, you know, leap to grouping them. So I'm going to group the first two together because they have an x squared in common. The last one doesn't have anything in common, but that's fine. I'll see if this works out. The GCF on those first two terms is x squared. That leaves me an x plus 2. The last one has no GCF other than a 1. So I'm going to put a 1 out front of that. Now with grouping method, what I want to try and do is make sure that I have a common factor, which I do. So it is almost in my thinking that I'm pulling this GCF forward. My GCF is x plus 2. And that leaves me an x squared plus 1. On top, I have that x minus 2 and an x plus 2. What I notice now by analyzing this, our function h of x gives me a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 2. And then I'm left with this x squared plus 1, which has, you know, that's always going to be positive. I can never make this thing go to 0. x squared plus 1 would never equal 0. So there is no vertical asymptotes on this one, mainly because there's um, no non-removable discontinuities. I would, however, have a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 2 coming from this one where I was able to cancel it. So probably a um, point discontinuity at x equals negative 2. I think that is probably enough, and perhaps we'll pick this up in class, and we'll be able to go through the last two slides in class. I will see you guys um, in class tomorrow.